Hello and welcome back to IT Security Labs and this video is a follow-up from this one that I showed you last year uh, about identify your network threats using the free and new SIM solution from Elasticsearch. A lot of people actually ask me if they, I can show you how I have it set up and today I have all the steps that I took. I will show you exactly uh, how I got to having these graphs right here. So if you watch until the end, not only are you going to see how I set it up, but I also share with you little tips that will help you during this setup because if you have, if you have not worked with Elasticsearch, there's one thing that I know that it can be very frustrating. The documentation is not that clear and you spend a lot of time looking up things. But with this video and my blog post that I created, you should be able to create this solution and have it up and running in under an hour. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is um, understand what this is. I speak about it in my previous video, but this is just a SIM solution, as uh, a security information and events management solution. And this is found in most uh, security operation centers. And if you want to learn IT security, I think implementing this in a lab which is what i'm going to show you is very important uh, so i you're going to find out that you get a lot of information from this and this page right here from the folks at the elastic explains it all i'll link it in the description i highly encourage that you read it before you start the installation process but as you can see here i mean this is awesome stuff i was looking at this and i thought to myself i have to try it and i tried it and i'm going to show you how i did it so I have a link to this, but what we have here is my lab, which is the same one that I showed you here. And I mean, I implemented it in my VMware lab environment. Um, this is going to be destroyed here in 2020 to more of a Docker Kubernetes environment. But for now they are virtual machines and I'm running on this one. I'm running Ubuntu 18 and that's what I will be showing you in how I implemented it. And I thought about making a video showing you step by step how I did it. But this type of material to me proved to be something that actually is worth a blog post. Because if I show you a blog post with pictures and every step that I took, it's easier for people to copy and paste the commands and look at the blog post than listen to me. So I created a blog post where I talk about a little bit of what I'm doing here. I even show you my VMware setup and what I did with uh, as far as how much memory I gave and RAM. So I just want to give you a quick update here. I gave it 16 gigs because I have it. You don't need to spend 16 gigs here. You don't need 500, maybe 200 would be fine. But this is what I have because my lab actually can support that. If your lab doesn't, just put enough to... Uh, support the lab and I think the folks at Elasticsearch have some minimum requirements there. So I even went ahead and showed you how to install Ubuntu and Java and everything. So if you follow my blog post, which I'll link in the description, you should be able to successfully implement this solution. There's a couple of things that I will mention in this video and I'll also show you my configuration files just in case there's something missing here in the blog post or you get stuck. Always come back to the video and see if I address what you have. Otherwise, if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. I will answer you quickly. And I believe this is one of the easiest installs of the Elk stack that I've done in a long time. Usually, every time I try to do anything with this, I struggled a lot. This is what I'm going. This is what I did. So follow my blog post and um, let me know what what you think. Otherwise, um, after installing the Elk stack. The one thing that you realize it, you end up right here. That's where my blog post will take you. You end up here where you sign in in your Kibana and you say view setup instructions. So as you can see, after you're done setting up uh, the Elk stack, you have all these options where you can set up NetFlow, which I did. I set up NetFlow from my Cisco Miraki, Miraki MX six uh, no MX one hundred to set up all the NetFlow data to my um, Elk stack. I cannot show you that because it will take me a lot of time to edit all the all of my family's traffic. I don't want to do that. But uh, you can use IP tables for PFSense, 
which is something I'm very excited to be actually playing with because I really like that. Windows Event Log, I did set, set this one up. I can I will be showing you in a little bit. Windows Event Log is a little um, loud, loud, so much noise coming from Windows Event Log. And from uh, Audit Bit, I found this one to be very valuable. Once you... Once you store all these different components of the same, you are going to realize that uh, there's so much data to play with, there's so much to see, there's so much to learn, and you spend hours and hours playing with it, in, which is the most fun. So if you have anything exciting that you did with this that you want to share with the community, just subscribe to the channel, go to the community page, and let us know. But if you follow my blog post, you are going to have a working Elastic Sim. If I missed anything, this is the part where I might actually explain everything. I'm going to explain the three things that are very important when setting up this sim. The three things that we, if you do them right, it's going to work. Right, so this is my uh, Ubuntu server that, that I, I actually used to create the blog post. Okay, now it wants my password. All right. Let's go through the configuration file very quickly because I think uh, if you get this, if you nail this one, this is what the elasticsearch.yaml configuration file. You're going to see that I did network.host000. If you're doing this in production, don't do it. Find a way to secure an Elasticsearch solution. Don't be taking advice from me to implement in production. This is for testing purposes only. And if you do this in production, do your research, find out how to best secure this system other than what I'm doing here was I'm not the best expert, but I know this is a no, no in production. The port is 9200. You can change it if you want, but what this means is if you change it here, you're going to have to change it on every client that you're going to be deploying to. But so for the lab, we left it to uh, 9200. The node cluster node, you need to specify this. These are all uncommented. If you don't specify this, your cluster will not work. Let's see. Um, all right, so there was one more. Yes. So you see this node.name? You need this one because we specify this same node all the way down here. So you need to uh, uncomment node.name on top and this, this node down here. This is our elasticsearch.yml. So if you find that yours is not working, Come back here, rewatch this section, find out where you're wrong. But as long as you have these, it should work. So let's uh, ex exit out of here. All right. So next, let's go to our kibana.yaml file. This is a very, very important file as well, just like the Elasticsearch file. These files are what tells this system what to do and where to find this information. So first, let me uh, let just scroll through this and show you what I have in here. Coming from the bottom only interested in things that are highlighted and that are so i have local host here server.name you can put it if you want but you don't have to um server.host you need to specify this uh you can put all zeros here as well but uh you can, if you specify it you'll be able to just hit it right server.port you can switch it if you want which is i encourage for those who are in production but as you can see, these are the only changes that we have made in our Kibana. So that was easy. Two configuration files that you need to make sure that are configured right. If you miss these configuration files, things will not work. Choose which data you want to put in your uh, Elasticsearch. For me, I used uh, aud audit bit. So let me show you what my audit bit looks like. Uh, this is in my lab domain controller, which I set up five years ago. Oh, yeah, a few years ago. So I have audit bit, I have packet bit over here. I'll show you, I'll link to instructions on how to install these. These ones are very simple to install if you're installing in Windows. It's, I mean, just do a simple packet bit, uh, audit bit install for Windows 2012. I won't waste your time by showing you how to do that, but uh, I have audit bit here. I even have Telegraph, which I was using for something else, but I have packet bit, winlog bit. These three actually are very helpful. For example, the uh, packet bit looks at the packets, audit does the auditing, which shows you the login attempts and everything, all that data. 
that's in there and all these files during the installation you're told to download the executable for audit bit it will come in as a i mean download the files it will come in as a zip file you unzip it they tell you to copy and paste it over here once you copy and paste it over here they tell you to come and uh run a few uh powershell commands which you can just find from the documentation but the most important thing that you want to do is edit this one which is very simple and you just need to come in and specify the host and for log stash and the outlook for elastic search if you the output for elastic search if you're using elastic search i prefer to use elastic search at all times and install log stash in sometimes so in this case you can just use uh elastic search it's very simple to set up if you have any issues or if you ever need me to create a video showing you how to install these clients um let me know so guys that's it from me follow the blog post ask me any questions that you have in the comments like and give me some thumbs up 2020 is going to be a great year for this channel we have already grown to more than 6,000 people which are it just blew my mind if you like this content and you have a lot of fun playing in your lab learning about it security just let me know in the comments and also subscribe otherwise i'll see you in the next video